What's going on, everybody? What's going on? Another episode of Misunderstood. I'm Saquon Peterkin. Uh, we, uh, we got some really good NBA games on tonight. Really good NBA games. Some nice comebacks. Some nice um, some nice storylines. You know, there's a lot going on in the Eastern Conference right now. We're going to discuss. First thing first, I want to uh, I want to. I want to mention uh, something positive about Demar Hamlin. You know, um, I mentioned you know earlier, early 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 episodes that my biggest fear right now is waking up in the Pacific time time zone, put on my TV and seeing breaking news. I always get this big anxiety feeling in my chest when when you know when I wake up, I'm about to put on the TV because you know. I don't know what I'm going to see, you know, but I know one thing. Every time I put on the TV, Demar Hamlin is always is always is always the headlines of the past two maybe maybe um yeah by the past two days he's been like like the first thing that that's that's on TV, you know. So today was it was no different from any, any from any other day. First thing that's on TV is about him, and it it says that there's positive a positive reaction, you know, in the hospital of his progress, and I was so happy to see that, so happy to see that a positive positive progress. He's making progress. He's not the woods yet. We're not gonna act like he's not the woods. We're not gonna stop with our prayers. We're not gonna stop thinking about him. Until he comes home. And even then, we're still going to think about him until he gets back on the field. You know, and and I feel like we're going to always remember him for how we look at professional athletes. I really believe that a casual fan or even a, or even a, a human being that knows, that knows the, the, the situation, that knows that there was a football player that almost died during a football game. You know, and pretty much, pretty much almost died twice. They had to bring, they had to bring him back on the field, and they had to bring him back in the hospital when he came to the hospital that night. I'm hoping that now people will stop looking at professional athletes as overpaid jock making millions playing the child's game. You know, we understood casuals, fans, or even people who, you know, don't watch sports but know particular athletes here and there. We understand that you don't know the work they put through in the gym. You don't know the sacrifices. You don't know. Look, 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 look what Tom Brady, what Tom Brady's going through. We don't know. We didn't know, you know, how many arguments he had with his wife, how many times she probably threatened that she's going to leave. Before she finally did, we we didn't we don't you don't know these things. You don't know the 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 injuries and the rehabs. You don't see that. You only see the forty eight minutes basketball game or the sixty minute um football game or the thirty six minute championship boxing match or the fit the twenty five minute championship UFC match. That's all you see. You don't see the ice baths. You don't see the Epsom salt baths. You don't see the, you know, the mini trips to the to the to the doctor. The surgeries, you don't see that. So, you know, I, I'm really hoping people' mindset of of a pro athlete is a lot different now because now you either seen or you heard about. This 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 man fighting for his life to play this kid's game, you know. So I think I think he he opened eyes on well, a lot of people inadvertently, and um, I'm happy that he's getting better. But but pr- praise kill go up until the man comes home. No. Man. 
keep fighting, my man. Keep fighting. I know you're strong. You can't be you can't be weak minded or weak hearted, you know, making it making it this far in the in the NFL. So I know you're not weak hearted. I know you're not weak minded. I know you're strong. And we're gonna we, you're still in our minds and we're gonna keep praying for you tomorrow. So let's get to the NBA. Uh, man, I really wanted to talk about Tuesday games since you know for obvious reasons I didn't discuss Tuesday's games, you know. But um, I gotta talk about today's games first, man. Like, like it was it was pretty magnificent. That Bucks Raptors game, that Milwaukee Bucks versus the Toronto Raptors. You know, in Toronto, was so such a fun game to watch. Such a fun game to watch, you know. And Giannis is becoming such a fun player to really tune into. You know, he's becoming such a fun player to really like. I'm, I'm, I'm tuned in, and he said he wants to. He wants to get his style so good that it, that it looks boring. And well, you're fifty fifty, Giannis, because you got your style down pat. How you like to play basketball? You got that down pat. It sure ain't boring. It sure is not boring. Like I I, I kept speaking all all about uh, Nikola Jokic all through you know the beginning of the season. And I and I said, you know, it's still early, it's still early now, but I felt like Jokic and and Luca was was like pretty much like front runners, but I didn't I did not say that Giannis denies this. I did not say that, you know, um, Kevin Durant denies this. I did not say that Jason Tatum denies this. They're making some. Real strong, strong points that they should be considering MVP MVP calendars, but like front runners, they all want to be front runners. They all they all playing like they trying to say we're front runners, man. We're not just candidates. We're not just candidates. We're front. We're, we're like at the end of the season, I'm the MVP. No, I'm the MVP. No, I'm the MVP. And Giannis is make is making that point. He's making that point, you know. Tuesday, you know, his 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 career high in points was fifty three points. Tuesday night he got fifty five. He got fifty. He got fifty five points Tuesday night. So now he has a new career high. You know, and it, and again, it's not just that you get that you get, you know, a whole bunch of points. I'm also looking at how you did it. And that game Tuesday against the. The Washington Wizards, you know, he, man, he was putting the hurt on Porzingis, who also had a decent game. You know, Porzingis had a good game too, but he, he was putting the hurt on Porzingis. You know, he was doing windmill dunks and, and, you know, cradle the baby like, 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 like he was an oversized Michael Jordan or something. You know. Walked out of there with ten rebounds and seven assists. Getting to the line, he gets to the line. He gets to the line, and now he don't just get to the line, but he makes those free throws. Now that was something he was having troubles with his and throughout his career was he's not he didn't seem very confident at the free throw line, taking like seven seconds to shoot the ball. You know, like just he didn't seem very confident in the free throw line. Last. Tuesday night, he was, was 15 out of 16. And tonight, Wednesday night, you know, what was he like? I want to say he was 19 out of 25, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. But I want to say he was 19, maybe 19 out of 23. Let me um do a little fact check. My mistake, 15 out of 21. That's what it was. 
I know he only missed six. That's something. That's something. It was like he only missed six or or four and everything. But I was I was I was more thinking about he he only missed six free throws. Fifteen out of twenty one. Six free, six free throws. You know, like it was really it was real fun watching Giannis play tonight. You know, and then what was so also was so was so fun to watch was how him and also Brook Lopez how big they are on defense. Like so big on so big on defense. Like they they make so many stops in, in this game against the Raptors, you know. So let me back it up a little bit. First of all, they put a hurt on the Raptors, first of all. The Raptors was hurting throughout the whole game. Throughout the whole game, Toronto could not get it together. You know, it didn't really seem like it, you know, they just I don't know, they just couldn't really they, they couldn't get their their, you know, they couldn't get their strive together. You know what I mean? Scotty Burns didn't score in the first half. The whole first half he didn't score. O for something, I forget we what what it was O for something and, and even missed two free throws. Even got to the line, got to the free throw line and missed both free throws. He just couldn't get it together in that first half. It was like, and it it felt like he was he he lacked a lot of confidence every time he tried to you know to you know make be, become an impact in the game. It got to the point where I was thinking to myself like like they need to sit him down. This this is not his night. I don't know what's going on with him, but this is not his night. Rookie of the year last year, but right now this is not his night. But coach kept him in. He kept him in, and that second half he started going off, and I was like, "Here we go." He's developing his confidence right now. He's he's um he's driving he's driving the lane right now. He's 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 dunking on people right now. He's taking them to Brook Lopez. Second half he started taking them to Brook Lopez. Start getting these these nice little floater layups to Brooke Lopez. He's it's nice to see how much he was going to the paint because in that first half they was daring him to shoot. Why I'm I'm watching the game and I'm seeing them like, like oh man I can't even I can't even estimate how much feet away from him. Basically just basically just put a big body in the center of the paint. Even though even though Barnes. Is basically at the top of the key. And it's like, go ahead and shoot that. We want you to shoot that. Daring him to shoot. Begging for this man to shoot. You know, so he made his adjustment. He start he started driving. He started driving, you know, to the lane and, and everything. That was that was, you know, that changed that changed that changed the game for him in that second half. And he ended up in in, in the night with, with nineteen points. Cool, you know what I mean. Nice, nice to see that you know he he was able to make make those adjustments, but uh, like the two the two the two guys that help to, that helped Toronto come back in this game was Fred Fred Van Fleet and Gary Trent Jr. Gary Trent Jr. with he started sh- making those threes at the end of the game, like he was like the cousin of Reggie Miller or something like it. And you know what's crazy is he had a horrible three point shooting shooting game. He, he, he horrible three point shooting game. You know before he started knocking them down in the last moments of the, of the game, he only made like one of them. I don't know. How much he shot, but I know he only made like one of them. You know, and you know, Toronto started taking advantage of, of you know, M- Milwaukee's. Like, I'm trying to look for the right word. 